The photograph we have today for uh, our presentation, Sherry took on the north coast of California. She's obviously standing up on the cliff. We didn't have her flying over though. Maybe next time. Uh, anyway, it's just almost uh, like an abstract painting. So Sherry, thank you again uh, for those. If you uh, get up a little closer in the left center lower, there's a flock of seagulls down there. Uh, some birds just down in the sand. Anyway, uh, thank you, Sherry, for these marvelous pictures you take. Love the colors. Uh, love the work that you do for us. So we are um, in the midst of doing parables. I would like to remind you that we try to make these presentations somewhere around, give or take a few minutes, 15 minutes or less. We're not trying to be totally comprehensive, but we're trying to go to the heart of the matter for you. So I hope that as you listen today, that as we look at the wheat and the tares and the fish in the net, that we understand that we're talking about individuals within the body of Christ. But when we talk about the field and the net, we're talking about the church being filled with people. So with that, I'd like to do a careful conversation about the wheat and the tares and the fish net. So letting God do his work makes the church what God wants it to be. How God sees the church and what he wants it to be may look nothing like you and I perceive it is supposed to look. God is making the church look what... He needs it to be. The question is for you and I, are we coming alongside? Are we in cooperation? Are we listening to the Holy Spirit? And are we working together with God? Because there is a conflict in these parables happening within the church. So let's do the parable, Matthew 13, starting with verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? Pay attention to the answer. He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us to go and gather them up? Now, we're going to pause for just a moment here and understand that within the church, there is an enemy who is at work to create issues within the church. So each of us has at this moment a pause to say, am I in full harmony with God's will in my life or not? Just think about that. Let's continue. But he said, No, you, you, lest you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Uh, the tare is a particular kind of native plant that when it comes up out of the ground, looks like grass, puts out a head, it almost mimics perfectly the wheat. It looks just like the wheat until we get down to harvest time. And notice... God, the owner of the wheat field, says, do not pull out the tares, lest you uproot the wheat with them. Isn't that just the way people are in the church? You know, sometimes when we see things go on in the church, we sometimes take sides instead of taking God's side. And you run into this problem that if you take something that appears to be wrong and you uproot it, how many good people might you take out with it? Interesting challenge, isn't it? Let both grow together, Jesus continues, until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, the tares were used as a source of fuel because there wasn't, this isn't a forested region. It's not like where we have in Idaho, Washington, Oregon, maybe on the east coast and the mountains in the south where you have these vast forests. The tares were used for fuel. So when it says gather them and bind them in bundles to burn them, that was the only good use of the tares was to be fuel for the fire. Isn't that interesting? 
Now the next parable, the parable of the dragnet. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the good into the vessels and threw the bad away. So understand how this works. They go out in a boat and take this big net and put it out in the lake. And there's ropes that go into the shore and then you have men on either side or volunteers, whoever's willing to pull that net in and they scoop up everything that that net could possibly catch. It says, so it will be at the end of the age that the church will be filled up and it says the angels will come forth and separate the wicked from among the just. Now, that word just is really important. That word just means to be justified by faith alone in Christ, not justified by your own behavior or your own good works. But then it says, and cast them into the furnace of fire, there will be a wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? So he's talking about his new infant church that is going to grow, it's going to flourish, it is going to be filled with people, all kinds of people, good ones and not so good ones. The parable is presented to the group as a call for patience for the church. We need that patience today. You see, the field is the community of God. The net is also the community, but it's filled with wheat and tares and all kinds of good and not good fishes. The call is to cast that net wide and big. In the net, good fish and not good, clean and unclean in the field, good wheat and tares, not good. The church is never up to your expectation or standard. You and I are not qualified to do the separation. God has a fixed time. When the grain is ripe, until then, repentance is available for everyone, good or bad. Only God can do the purge. Do not do it for Him by purging yourself out or others. Because that's God's work, not yours or mine. Notice Luke 13, 6 to 9, the parable of the fig tree. Notice how God addresses this very issue. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But the gardener answered him and said, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, then you can cut it down. In other words, give this fig tree time. And I'm saying, give the people in the church time. God is available for them, no matter what their struggles are. God has a work to do in us. Colossians 1, 27 to 29. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the just. Christ in you, the hope of glory. 28, we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. To this end, Paul wrote, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works mightily in me. In the church, we need to strive according to God's working and let him work mightily in you. I think that's wisdom. Romans 8, 1 and 2, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Can we see each other through a biblical view? Romans 8, 37 to 39, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. The wheat are those who through him have victory. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that beautiful? 
our closing slide today. It's just one of those pictures Sherry snaps, you know, where you're just witnessing that transition of the season. That first snow kind of comes and then goes and uh, just the, kind of that wonderful time. In the springtime, you get that fresh snow on the mountains after it's been snowy all winter and then it goes away. This is just one of those beautiful transition pictures that Sherry captured. Thank you, Sherry, for your amazing work. Blessings, I hope you enjoyed this. Please go study more. There's so much more to be discovered in these parables than what I have presented today, but please go and enjoy them. Blessings. Take care now.